everyone and welcome to the very first edition of Creative Household Play. This is a brand new virtual program for us so I'm so excited that you're here with us today. So my name is Zoe and I work here at Family Futures as the Community Resource Navigator. So I get to help connect people in the community with resources. Um, and I also get to do this fun program. So Creative Household Play is all about activities that you can do at home with very little to no extra material. So everything that we show you here, you're gonna have in your home already, or we'll give you a substitution for something that you will have at home. So every week we're going to do three different activities. One is going to be for our toddlers, for our one to three year olds. One's gonna be for our preschoolers, our four to five year olds, and one is gonna be for our school age kiddos, so around six to 10. Though lots of the activities, um, many age groups are gonna find fun. So. Every week we'll do three activities. So this week we are going to do a kitchen band, we're gonna do an I Spy kit, and we're gonna do a giant crossword puzzle. So let's get started. We're gonna start with our toddler activity. So this one is our kitchen band. This is a super easy, classic activity that toddlers love, and chances are you probably did this when you were a child as well. So all you need for this activity is anything from your kitchen that is A, not gonna break, and B, isn't sharp. So some things that work really well, we have metal pots and pans work super good. Metal bowls work really well as well. Um, wooden spoons work super well. And plastic bowls, plastic cups, Tupperware work super well also. And then unusual things like whisks tend to work really good as well. So any items that you have like that at home, gather them all together. What you're going to do is just set them up on the ground. If you're concerned about noise, I recommend laying out a towel or a blanket or a carpet um, and that will help absorb some of that sound. You can also put in earplugs and no one will judge you. Just make sure you're still keeping one eye on your child. Um, you can demonstrate for your child what the different sounds are. So you can practice, say, hitting wooden spoon on plastic bowl and then wooden spoon on metal bowl and show them how uh, it makes different sounds. And then once they get the hang of it, you can let them go. And chances are they'll entertain themselves at this for quite a while. Uh, it's a, definitely a fan favorite for the toddlers. So that is our first activity, our kitchen band. Our second activity that we're gonna do today is our I Spy kit. So this one is great for preschoolers, um, but it also works well for other ages as well. So for this activity, you are going to need any kind of small items from your house that you feel comfortable with your child playing with. So this can be like game pieces, it can be craft supplies, so um, dice, um, ping pong balls, golf balls, pom poms, feathers, uh, can be fridge magnets, beads, buttons, uh, small toys, uh, random kitchen items. Uh, this is my I Spy kit here. So I'll show it to you. Hopefully you can see it'll be a little bit small. So in here I have just a whole assortment of kitchen items. If you have a junk drawer at home, this is a great place to go for some of these things. So I have in here a paper clip. I have an old cork. I have giant marbles. Uh, lid from a milk jug, um, a paper clip in here. This is one of those fuzzy things that goes on the end of a paint roller, uh, a bag clip, anything like that. So as you can see, there's lots of different items that will work. Um, so once you have gathered yourself a pretty good pile of these items, you can put them into a bin or a container or basket of some kind. Uh, and then there's a few different games that you can play with it. So I'm sure you'll be able to think of some of your own games as well. I'll give you a few ideas. Uh, some games are more independent than others, some you can play with your child. So our first game that you can play, you are going to keep all of your items in your basket or bin, uh, but then pull out maybe four or five or six of them. You're going to lay them out on your table, take a photo of it with your phone. You can either print off your photo or you can just show your child the picture from your phone. Uh, your picture is going to look a little bit like this. So as you can see here, I pulled out a big clip and a feather and a clothespin and a couple other items as well. So if that's what your picture looks like, you're gonna take those items that you took out, you're gonna mix them back into your I Spy kit, and then you're gonna show your picture to your child and have them dig through the kit to try to find these items. Kind of like a mini scavenger hunt or like those classic I Spy books. Um, so that's one game that you can play with your kiddo. You can take a variety of pictures and that will entertain them for a while, trying to dig out the items and place them. 
Uh, you can also do this where you take a few of your items, not all of them, and you hide them around your house. I recommend only doing one room unless you want to be finding mysterious objects under your couch or behind your toilet for the next two weeks. Um, so a living room would work great. So you take a few of your items and you'll hide them around in your living room and then you'll play I Spy with your child based on those items. So you can play, for example, by saying I Spy with my little eye, something that is yellow and your child would have to seek out the item that didn't belong, so in this case, maybe it would be this yellow bag clip that you stuck on your bookshelf. Or I spy something that is red, maybe you stuck a red feather into a house pond or something like that. So they'll have to look for the item that doesn't belong that you've hit um, in the color that you chose for them to search for. So that's our I spy kit. There's lots of other things that you can do with that as well, so you can keep it assembled. Um, you can also keep mixing up the items to keep it interesting for your child. Uh, and they can play with you by hiding things for you, or you can play with each other and they can play by themselves as well. So that's our I Spy kit. That one's great for preschoolers. Our third and final activity this week is going to be our giant word search. So it doesn't have to be giant. If it's giant, it's a little more fun and exciting, but you can definitely just use a regular sized piece of paper as well. So what you'll need for this one is a writing surface and a writing instrument. So. If you're using a giant piece of paper, for example, you would need your paper and then a marker. If you're using a big old piece of cardboard, such as an unfolded box, um, you could use uh, cardboard and a Sharpie. You could use your driveway and chalk. You could use a whiteboard and whiteboard marker, or you could just use a plain piece of paper and a marker or a pen. So for the example that I have for you, I just have a regular piece of paper, but the bigger the better in this case. I, just a little tip and trick as well. You can do automatic word search generators online where you can input your words and it makes it for you. Um, so those are really handy, but if you wanna do it the good old fashioned way with just some pen and paper, you can do that as well. So in order to make your crossword, you are going to need a list of words that you want to use. So it's a good idea to use words either that your child is interested in, or maybe their weekly school spelling words or something like that. Uh, and having themes is nice, but it's not essential. So for example, all your words could be the names of Marvel superheroes or Disney movies or something like that. The example that I did today for you guys is an animal one. So to start off, you're going to imagine your paper like a grid and you're gonna write letters horizontally and vertically on your sheet of paper. So it'll look a little bit like this. So as you can see, I have a line of random letters across the top and across the side, and this is gonna form our grid. So when you input your letters onto here, you want them all to fall into columns and rows. So this is what your paper is going to look like to start. Once you have it looking like that, you're going to start inputting your words. So if, for example, this one that I did is an animal themed one, and I started inputting the words and I put them horizontally, diagonally, and vertically. So you can see here I have horse, I have pig, um, what else do I have? I have bird, I have cow. Um, so there's all of our words on there. So this is all the words that I wanted to use. You can do as many as you want uh, and have them intersect with each other if you like or have them all separate. Uh, you can do them backwards for an extra challenge if your child is a little bit older as well. So once you have it looking like this, that's your step two. Your final and third step is going to be to fill in the rest of your crossword. So anywhere in those columns or rows that doesn't have a letter, you are now going to want to fill in. So now you can see you have rows of letters and you have columns of letters and your words are written in there. And it can just be random letters to fill in your squares. You're going to want your list of words along the bottom. And once you have it looking like this, then voila, you are done. You can give this to your child and they can complete it. Uh, you can also teach your child how to do this as well. And they can make one for you or for their siblings. Uh, you can go back and forth. If you use a erasable surface, that can be really fun as well, and you can just keep doing them over and over again. So that's our third and final activity, our giant crossword puzzle. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today for these three activities. Every week, we're gonna have three new activities, so you can join us every Monday morning at 10 a.m., and there will be a new video up uh, with new activities each week. If you have any ideas for activities or you want to share pictures of um, your work this week, please do. We would love to see them. Um, and of course, if you need any parenting support, community resources, or just help thinking of more things to do at home with your kids, please contact our agency and we'll be happy to help you. 
So thanks again for showing up today, guys, and watching this video, and we'll see you next week, Monday at 10. Thank you. Bye.